All right, is that a little better? Just wiped all the water off the lens. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Adam from K6ARK Portable Radio, and today I'm out on a local summit just a few miles from my house, and I brought out this little magnetic loop antenna. So we're gonna play with this today, and after we make some contacts, we're gonna go through and talk about the build and design of this thing. It's pretty simple, and I think you might have some fun building one of these for yourself. So let's play some radio first. So I'm set up here on 20 meters. I'm running the Elecraft KX2 today and feeding the magnetic loop as I mentioned a minute ago. Let's do a quick uh, SWR test here. It's looking all right. 1.3 to 1 or so. 5 watts into the loop. So let's get a spot out. All right, spot sent. Hit record on the recorder and let's make some contacts. RBN picked me up in two land, that's good. K3TCU. Three three nine from him. Strong QSB, man. Come on, I think. A little slow this morning. Not a lot going on. W6JP. 539. Kilo 4 Mike Fox. Come on, buddy. 339. Nice. Got him. <laughs> Seven H O blowing my ears out. Dang, five five nine from him. Big signal. Wow, there's the goat. Come on, Steve. Yeah. Two two nine from the goat. It's a little short for uh, twenty meters right now. Thanks, Steve. Good to get you in the log, man. To be six NKR. Got him. <laughs> So I'm gonna give you a bit closer of a look as I go in to retune this thing. So this loop is about a meter in diameter. It's made out of bar stock aluminum that I think is about a sixteenth of an inch thick and uh, half an inch wide. So um, it's just stuff I got from Home Depot and it uh, packs up nice and small. I'll show you that when we uh, wrap the day up here. It's fed down here at the bottom with a gamma match so I've got the ground going to the, the loop and the conductive element coming up through this wire or the, the center conductor from the coax coming up through the wire and then connecting down to a stainless steel nut here. Up at the top, I've got a, oh, what is this thing? It is um, a box with some fixed capacitors, a switch on the backside 
and a variable capacitor for fine tuning on the front. And the way I tune the thing, I was on 20 meters, so I'm going to move the switch to the 30 meter position, and that switches in a fixed capacitor that gets me into the band for 30. And then I fine tune looking for peak noise with the variable capacitor, and then finish it off with transmitting a, a low power signal and looking at the SWR meter to fine tune it. And it works pretty well. So I'm going to set the camera down and we're going to tune it. Change bands here. 30 meters. Turn my power down, one watt, and then transmit here. Still high SWR. Sometimes when there's not much noise, it's hard to hear. There we go. Turn the power back up. There we go. Got it down to about 1.2 to 1, just uh, testing it there. So I think that's uh, going to do. So let's set the camera back over into position and play some more radio on 30 now. So this, this loop is less and less efficient as we go down in the bands because it's not that big. It's only a meter in diameter. So on 40 meters, we're probably like 10% efficient. On 30 meters, I'm going to guess maybe 20% efficient. And on 20 meters, we're probably closer to, to 40 or 50% efficient, maybe even a little better. So it's, it's not too bad up there. Man, the May Gray is really getting me wet up here. It is just... Uh, like drizzling. <laughs> it's just nasty wet. Brr, a little chilly too. RBN picked me up. That's good. Getting out. K6YK. 599 from him too. Dang. Booming. It's interesting, I'm getting, you know, strong signals back from uh, a number of stations, but uh, not a lot of stations calling. I wonder if it's just a little early or, or if I'm only getting out to certain areas or something. I know these loops are kind of somewhat directional. They, they radiate along the, the plane of the antenna in, in those directions, not broadside to it. Um, so maybe that has something to do with that, I don't know. Okay, so we are retuned for 40 meters. Not much activity out there today. I think it's just still a little too early. So that's what I get for being an early bird, I guess. All right. All right, spots up. So this antenna is not very efficient on 40 meters. It's, uh, as I, I think I mentioned a little while ago, it's about probably about 10 to 15 percent efficient on 40 meters it's it's just too small um, for it to be much more efficient than that but still some power gets out and you can make contacts with it so we're gonna give her a go cq 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 soda He's loud. <laughs> Ken's always loud, man. He's got a heck of a station in Arizona there, and he always chases me on 40. But uh, he just gave me a 519, which tells me the noise level's at least low there, but, um, but I'm not putting out a real strong signal, which is not a surprise. Um, 
and propagation may not be the best for that short. Holy crap, just got Japan on 40 meters. Well, there you go. All right, I guess um, maybe this thing isn't that bad on 40. <laughs> what the heck, man? That's insane. I've never gotten Japan on 40 before, and here we are sitting here running five watts with that little magnetic loop, and we just got Japan. <laughs> Let's keep calling, that was awesome. So one of the cool things you might not be able to really see too well about this antenna, well, let's cheat, let's do it this way. This thing sits right on a trekking pole. So I just stuck my trekking pole in the bush here upside down and I built a mount out of a PVC T connector and it just sits right on the end of the trekking pole. It makes it super easy to set this antenna up while I'm out uh, out and about here. So let me set the camera back down. So I just showed you the trekking pole. I had to run over to the HT and make a quick contact to a buddy on a summit nearby. Um, but I want to finish this up because I, I want to show you guys this cool antenna. So uh, as I mentioned, it just sits on top of the trekking pole here. Just pops right off there. And um, oftentimes I'll set up the trekking pole with just stakes and guy lines so it's it's vertical. BNC connector here at the base and let's leave that there for now. This loop breaks down in kind of a cool way so um, I need to push it against the ground to spring load it here for a second to undo this wing nut that I have to be careful not to drop because it's if I drop it I can't put the antenna back together when I'm done. So as you can see, this opens up and ends up being just a long bar like that. I'm gonna put the wing nut back on so I don't lose it. There we go. And then to pack this up, I just accordion fold this thing down. You can kind of see how that works. So these are, as I mentioned, 1 16th, 1 16th inch thick bar stock aluminum with stainless steel hardware at the joints, uh, nylock nuts uh, to give it a little bit of you know uh, tension so it doesn't come unscrewed and as you can see it just folds right up into a very small compact package. And my feed point, I should show you that here. So the feed point here is, uh, let's adjust our focus 
there we go. So the feed point here is just an alligator clip on a wire. It's actually got a little rust on it. I should probably swap that out. Um, and it's a gamma match. So what the way this works is that when this is open, I just clip the alligator clip a short distance over, which I figured out just experimentally. There we go. Let's get some light background so you can see it. Um, and it it works really well. Um, I get uh, about a one to down to about a 1.1, 1.2 to one match on 20 and 30 meters, and I get down to about a 1.4, 1 1.5 to one match on 40 meters, which apparently is good enough to work Japan on five watts. So, <laughs> so there you go. The whole antenna here weighs about eight and a half ounces. It's quite light, packs small, um, and because it just sits on a trekking pole, it. You don't have to carry a bunch of extra stuff to set it up. You don't need a, a pole with it. And that was part of my intent behind this design was to build an, an antenna, a magnetic loop antenna that was self-supporting. Uh, before this, I built one out of uh, tent poles and that worked pretty darn good as well. Um, and I built this one specifically for use with the mountain topper. That's why it's uh, 20, 30, and 40 meter bands on this one. Let's see, focus, focus. I think we're somewhat in focus there. So this switch, three position switch, switches in and out uh, fixed capacitors that get us into the right band we wanna operate on. And then on the front here, this knob is uh, 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 air variable capacitor that's only I think about seven picofarads. So not, not a whole lot of uh, capacitance there, but it's enough to, uh, to tune across the entire band and find that sweet spot where the antenna is resonant uh, so you can make some solid contacts to Japan on 40 meters. Well, I am packed up and I'm gonna start heading down the mountain because I'm kinda damp up here from sitting in the clouds and uh, it's time to get down the hill and grab some warm food and, and drink and uh, get on with the rest of the day. But thanks for coming along on the adventure. I'm gonna put some uh, links in the description down below on information about magnetic loops or small transmitting loop antennas in case you're interested in trying to build one for yourself because they're a heck of a lot of fun to play with. They are, um, they pack small, they don't take a lot of space up on a summit and as you saw, they can work really well. So check it out. Until next time, I'm Adam from K6ARK Portable Radio, saying 7-3.